Today, we are going to explore the work of African-American artist Alma Woodsy Thomas. Alma was born on September 22, 1891. She was an expressionist painter and art educator who was best known for her colorful abstract paintings. She lived and worked as an art educator in Washington, D.C. Her art is known for the pattern, rhythm, and color. Can you describe the rhythm in her artwork? Think about rhythm in music. How is rhythm in her artwork represented? Alma Woodsy Thomas painted in acrylics on large canvases, and she continued to produce many watercolors that were studies for her paintings. Thomas's style consisted of broad mosaic-like patches of vibrant color applied in concentric circles or vertical stripes. Color was the basis of her painting, and it reflected her lifelong study of color theory. Alma was born in Columbus, Georgia as the eldest of four children to John Harris Thomas, a businessman, and Amelia Thomas, a dress designer. In 1907, the family moved to the Logan Circle, a neighborhood of Washington, D.C. As a child, she displayed artistic interest in making puppets and sculptures at home. Alma attended Armstrong Technical High School where she took her first art classes. After graduating from high school in 1911, she studied kindergarten education. She served as a substitute teacher in Washington, D.C. until 1914. She then obtained a permanent teaching position on the eastern shore of Maryland. Thomas entered Howard University in 1921 as a home economics student. She then switched to be a fine arts major. She earned her bachelor's in science degree in fine arts in 1924 from Howard University, and she became the first graduate from the University of the Fine Arts program. Alma Woodsy Thomas passed away on February 24, 1978. She was still living in the same house that her family moved into upon their arrival in Washington, D.C. back in 1906. She is still known as one of the greatest African-American painters of our time. everyone, I am delighted to join the National Gallery of Art in celebrating the one and only Alma Thomas. Really throughout her lifetime, she was a pioneer. <laughs> she was a force of nature. If you're having a bad day and you look at an Alma Thomas, you, your spirits are lifted. I remember when I first heard about her, but growing up in Washington, D.C., I think she was kind of everywhere. So much of her art is about the flowers and trees that grow all over D.C. My mom grew roses and azaleas, like the ones that inspired Alma Thomas. My grandmother also moved from the South to Washington and taught at D.C. public schools for over 30 years, just like Alma. She was born on September 22, 1891, in Columbus, Georgia. Her middle-class family lived in a neighborhood called Rose Hill, until the harsh realities of Jim Crow drove them north. I came to Washington in the last day of August, 1907. 
Alma and her family moved to this house near Logan Circle. It's right up the street from one of the oldest black churches in the city. Washington, D.C. is a highly segregated city at the time. But moving to this neighborhood surrounding St. Luke's Episcopal Church would have situated them in one of the leading African-American communities at the time. Alma went to one of two all-black public high schools in D.C. Years later, just a few months before she died, she told a Washington Post journalist, when I entered the art room, it was like entering heaven, a beautiful place just where I belonged. The Armstrong High School laid the foundation for my life. In 1921, she became the first student in the new art department at Howard University. And in 1924, she was the first to graduate with a bachelor's degree. Later that year, she started teaching at Shaw Junior High School. She would remain there for 35 years, teaching art to hundreds of the city's black children. At one time in Washington, you could say one out of two black people who had gone to the schools in D.C. had taken art from Alma Thomas. She also reached kids through St. Luke's. Here, she founded the Sunday Afternoon Beauty Club for neighborhood children. When the Mona Lisa uh, was on tour, she actually escorted the Sunday Afternoon Beauty Club to the National Gallery of Art for the young African-Americans to experience this canonical work of Western art. She also kept learning herself. In the 1930s, she got a Master's of Arts education from Columbia University. Her thesis is on marionettes. She learned from her friends, artists like Lois Milo Jones, Jacob Kanan, and later Sam Gilliam. In the 50s, she studied painting at American University, where she started to experiment with abstract styles. She started to abstract using color and movement. And she came up with what's called sort of Alma stripes or dots of color that some have equated that they look a little bit like Byzantine mosaics or tiles. But she developed them in a way looking at nature. She'd always been inspired by nature, from the rose bushes at her Georgia home to the beautiful public gardens around DC. But her deepest inspiration came right here, at her house on 15th Street. I worked on the landmark application for Alma's house. The house was really integral to her work. It wasn't just a place where she lived. It was part of her inspiration and the way her art developed. In 1966, a few years after she'd retired from teaching, James Porter invited her to do a solo show at Howard. She was feeling just too tired and worn out to come up with anything new for it. And she said, I sat down in the window in that red chair and I looked through the window at the holly tree and I saw the patterns of light coming through the tree and changing. And I created a new style based on that pattern of light coming through the leaves. Alma Thomas was 75 years old when she started working in this new style. Over the next few years, she made dozens of paintings inspired by nature. In the late 60s, like millions of other people, she was fascinated by our trips to the moon. She made a series of space paintings that she described as large, sparkling works. Many of her paintings have a spiritual feeling to them, and a few have explicitly religious themes. Perhaps her most famous painting that reflects on a religious theme is Resurrection, that is now in the collection of the White House. I wanted to make sure that other little black girls growing up would see that they belonged in the people's house too. And it's why when we were redesigning the old family dining room, preparing to open it up to the public for the first time in history, we acquired Resurrection, making it the first piece by a black woman added to the White House's permanent collection. We placed the painting directly in visitors' line of sight across from the doorway and centered right between a pair of towering windows so that its warmth would greet you the moment you stepped into the room. It's that warmth that makes Alma's paintings more than beautiful. They have the same nourishing, joyful presence she shared with generations of DC school kids. And that's why Alma Thomas should be your new favorite artist.